Rachel from Seven and All, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I did the setup for using Gentle and Classical Primer with my son, as well as how I plan for it on a weekly basis. I will say Gentle and Classical Primer is probably the curriculum I've had to do the most planning for out of any other curriculum that I've used, um, but that's really not saying much <laughs> because I tend to use very, very low prep curriculum, so it's still really not a lot. Let me show you how I'm using it. Now I'll begin by talking about how I prepped for this for the year before we began, and then I'll talk about a little bit about how I prep for it each week. So Gentle and Classical Primer is largely a morning time curriculum plan. It covers, uh, it covers kind of the riches of your education, the poetry, the music, and the art, the literature, um, there's some math involved, hymns, catechism questions, and Bible stories. So at this kind of preschool, kindergarten level, it's a really great option for your morning time when you're not doing like serious history or science or anything like that together. There is a book list of required books uh, that are part of this curriculum that it's relying on and recommending throughout. So what I did before I was going to be using this is I acquired the books that I needed from this list. So some specific books like Stone Soup, Choo Choo by Virginia Lee Burton, Brambley Hedge, I did buy the specific book that she recommended. Um, and you'll notice some of them I bought in Spanish when I could get them. Then I will say I did not actually um, follow her recommendation of a specific fairy tale and a specific fables collection just because I knew um, between my mom's and my collection we probably could cover all the fairy tales and all the fables just through books that we had on hand. So like this Red Riding Hood, this compendium of fairy tales, it covers quite a few of them. We I already had several, so I didn't feel a need to get the specific one she recommended because we have those same stories. We have access to those same stories. So I got the books I would need um, to make sure we had all those core books. And then memory statement cards are a really big part of this program. So we printed all the memory statement cards. What the author of the curriculum recommends doing is having a memory statement wall or board where you hang up these cards for display all throughout the week. I actually don't do that at all. <laughs> Breaking the rules here as all homeschool moms do. Um, but I got, I printed the cards and I actually laminated them. And what I do is I stored each, each subject's cards in these nice sturdy, Ziploc bags, which I can't tell you where they came from because they came from the free pile at my husband's work. So I stored each subject's cards in these bags, just like this. And when I laminated them, I actually laminated them, printed them, laminated them as double-sided. Now that was mainly to save on space, save on materials, make it a little more affordable. That one must have had an odd number, but I laminated them double-sided just, yeah, for, <laughs> Just a little bit of cost savings, work savings. And so you'll see, let me show you. Those are in, oh, that one must have been single-sided too. Most of them are double-sided. <laughs> and I get out whatever cards we're gonna be working on this week. It's not always a new card in every subject each week. Some are for more than one unit, but some are for just one unit each. And I put all the cards that we're using for a week within our, in our weekly envelope. The rest I keep in storage in this little box. Um, you'll notice what I didn't prep is the storyboards and the storyboard pieces, which are part of primer, as well as the three-part cards. I didn't print and prep those because I knew myself and I kind of knew I wasn't going to be very interested in actually using them. <laughs> I absolutely love the idea behind the storyboards of having your child retell a story and kind of act it out and the storyboard materials serve as great props for doing that story retelling. But in reality, that was a lot of printing that would be a lot of prep for me. Some people enjoy it and some people are not the biggest <laughs> fans of the prep work on that. So, but I love the idea of acting it out. So actually what we've been doing is I can take that same idea and do it without storyboards. So for the three little pigs, we acted out the whole story of the three little pigs and we built houses out of 
paper for straw and little sticks for sticks and out of Legos for the brick house and we had little toy bears representing the pigs because we didn't have any toy pigs and we had a little toy raccoon being the wolf because we didn't have a wolf <laughs> but we're really good at using our imaginations we acted out we acted out the whole story my son loved it he's really good he loves the three little pigs story so we do that kind of thing where we still do the acting out and kind of retelling of the stories but I knew just for me and for my style, I didn't necessarily need all these beautifully curated pieces. I didn't need the prep work. When I'm building the houses for the three little pigs, that's something I'm doing together with my kids. Versus if I'm prepping little storyboard pieces, that's not something they can really be a part of. So for my style, just plain acting out the stories together and like kind of making our own little drama out of it using whatever toys we have works very well. All right, and then what I'll do on a weekly basis is typically on a Friday, I'll just come and kind of, in my mind and on paper, <laughs> sketch out what I'm gonna do throughout the week. So I'll check out, okay, what's our Bible story? It's Isaac and Rebecca. And I don't have that exact Bible story book she recommends. This was another case of, I'm pretty sure I can just use what I have, um, and I'll be able to find all the stories in the story books that we have. And then I'll just plan on what we're gonna do throughout this week. So I don't wanna just read the Bible story on one day, especially because I have young sons. I have noticed it's, it's really good for understanding and memorization to kind of go back to that story throughout the week and kind of retell it. Retell the Bible story day by day. Um, and probably I review, and then maybe by the last couple of days, we're just asking questions like, you know, who's this person? What, what was it, what was something important that happened in the story? And maybe we're not fully retelling, retelling it by the end of the week, but we do a couple of things. I don't think Isaac and Rebecca really has any particularly cool crafts to do with it. I mean, there are certain Bible stories like, you know, maybe Noah's Ark where you, want, where you get to do more of like, we could reenact it with, with our boat and our animal toys or something like that. Um, Isaac and Rebecca is not necessarily the most active Bible story, so it's probably not one I'm gonna be super extra about. Um, still, I mean, still a good story to learn. Then our main story for this week is Little Red Riding Hood. So the wonder tale for this week is Red Riding Hood, and this is the copy that I have, um, which is not the copy she recommends. This one is by Beatrix Potter, and be warned, it does end with the wolf eating both grandmother and Little Red Riding Hood. I'm okay with that, but not everybody would be. <laughs> so, just be aware. We're gonna do that, and then I think also on Monday we will read the page from Everyday Graces for manners. And the topic is I do my chores for this week. Then the next days we're gonna do some different reading. We're doing retelling the Bible on this day, so we are going to act out um, Little Red Riding Hood on this day. Um, Thursday. I'm not going to kind of do the acting out or retelling on the same day. You, you know, just kind of trying to divide it up. I am going to put some of our nature read alouds into these other days, as well as some of our alphabet adventures read alouds into the other days of the week. Because I just, I just try to make sure I do spread out the read aloud so we're not reading too many very long stories with a lot to understand on the same day. I, I want to have a couple of stories, a couple of readings for us to do every day. On Tuesday, we'll do our story of the orchestra because for this is a music week. It alternates between art and music. So this is a music week. We're learning about Bach, about Bach and we're learning about the organ as far as an instrument. So I believe our page in story of the orchestra will be reading about organs. <laughs> you know, the musical kind. <laughs> And so after, I'll fill in our stories for the different days of the week from our other um, curriculums as well. But once I kind of jot down what story books or books we're reading, then I just put in something here very simple, which is cards and songs. And this is my reminder to, that we're gonna go over all of our memory statement cards. So all of these little things they're supposed to be learning, the math skill, the catechism question, uh, the Bible story, the nursery rhyme, all of those have prompts on our cards. And so every day I will get out those cards and we'll flip through them, maybe go through them like that, or maybe towards the end of the week we'll start playing review games where I will put them down on the floor and he'll have to run and grab one or we'll slap one with a spatula. 
And so that's why I don't like to put them on a wall. I like to be very active with them and we have a lot of fun with that. So we have our cards for each of these little items. And after the cards, um, we will end typically our morning time with a little math activity game. So our math game. And here I might follow the math activities that she has listed in here. Monday mix-ups, Tuesday toss, Wednesday wipeout. Or I might just pick something from preschool math at home that we haven't fully mastered yet and just play that. So, so just during my little planning time, I'll pick which ones I want to do on what days and have a nice little quick math activity to end our everyday with. Fridays are when I will tend to do a craft if we have one. This is a music week, so it doesn't have an art project in it. The art weeks typically have a bigger art project, um, and I would do that on, typically on a Friday. I don't know why, it's a homeschool tradition. We do our extra fun things on Fridays when we're feeling motivated by the upcoming weekend. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I do is I will set up my playlist for the week, and I have a Spotify premium account. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that Long term, I have really liked it so far. I don't like subscriptions, but I have really used <laughs> this quite a bit already. So um, we'll see how long I actually keep Spotify Premium, but I have it on my phone. And I'll just put in all the songs for this, any new songs for this week and take off any old songs. So she has a song recommendation for Robert Louis Stevenson, which is the Ted Jacobs songs. Those are on Spotify. A lot of times I can find a song for the math skill that we're doing, whatever counting kind of thing, I can find a song for that. I have our hymn on that playlist. I'll put our nursery rhyme on the playlist, our scripture song. I found, a, I found this Bible verse in a scripture song from, I believe, Slugs and Bugs. So I'll have all that on our playlist. And that is something, maybe I'll play a song or two from it when we're doing our cards and songs. I won't do every single song, but I'll do a song or two during our cards and songs time. But then the, the whole playlist is something that I'll play when I'm washing dishes and the boys are playing, or when, you know, kind of any more quietish time of the day when we can kind of run around, sing, listen to songs. And that has worked really well for us. I don't want to necessarily keep Spotify forever, but it has made it much easier for this non very musical or techie person to have a little more music and tech in our days. So if you, what, what do you use to have your songs, um, song, learning songs play during the day? Let me know if you have any um, alternatives to Spotify or if you also have found Spotify to be a very good option. So I didn't fully plan through all of this for you, but I'm just kind of showing you my general process. I think it's a little bit too hard for me to hold the camera and actually write semi-legibly while talking at the same time. A little bit too much multitasking for my brain right here. But I hope that this gives you an idea of the process. So this is probably the most planning I've done for a curriculum. But once I have this little list made and I have my playlist made, it is very, very easy to just enact this curriculum for our morning time throughout the week. I hope it was helpful for you to see this in action. We are really enjoying this so far and I like um, being exposed to music and poems and stories that even I didn't necessarily know. So isn't it a joy to always get to learn with our kids. I'll be seeing you next time. Bye!